What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. My name is Mark Webster. If you're new to my channel, I'm a full-time videographer. I love making YouTube videos here, teaching you guys how to become a better photographer, videographer, and everything in between. In today's video, I wanna talk about mobile phone photography because it's absolutely insane how much technology is being put into our mobile phones these days. And our cameras are becoming less and less useful to a certain extent when it comes to travel. It's awesome to have something so powerful in your pocket. The phone I've been using for the past couple months is the Huawei P40 Pro. This thing is absolutely insane when it comes to photography. I don't think there's a better phone out there if you're interested in mobile phone photography. What makes this insane is that it has a 50 megapixel ultra vision camera. This is better than most DSLRs out there. My normal camera is actually a Sony a7 III, which is 24 megapixels. It's absolutely incredible how much technology can be put into such a small phone. There's so many cases where having a high quality camera in your phone it's gonna allow you to take photos when you might not wanna bring your camera, whether you're on a date, whether you're on a family vacation and you're not bringing around your camera backpack. Having a phone with an amazing camera is definitely a good tool and I'm super happy with the P40 Pro so far. In this video, I wanna walk through a couple photos that I've taken with the Huawei P40 and just go through a little bit of tips of editing mobile photography. So I live in Alberta, probably one of the most beautiful provinces in Canada, if not one of the best places in the world in my opinion, especially if you're into photography. If you watch Peter McKinnon's videos about Moraine Lake, that's about two hours from where I live, so I'm super grateful to live in a beautiful place. This first photo is taken on the Icefield Parkway, which is the most beautiful drive from Banff to Jasper. If you've done it, you know how incredible it is. There's so many different spots and you're just stopping all the time to take photos. So this is the very first photo shot on the Huawei P40. So as you can see, if I zoom in here, the detail in this in resolution is absolutely incredible. You can see a little subject there. And then the dynamic range as well. That's one thing that we talk about with cameras, especially cell phones, is the dynamic range. Because this camera can shoot in RAW, it's just like your DSLR in terms of flexibility when you bring it into your editing program. These files are DNGs, which is a very common RAW format, and allows us to push and pull pretty incredible. So as you can see, I drop in the highlights and then lifting the shadows to recover a lot of that shadow detail. And then I'm just gonna brighten this up just so you can see it. So there's one thing I noticed, especially with these images, is that the white balance seems a little bit off. So one little tip when it comes to using these images and something that I've been trying to play with a little bit because of the white balance issue, I always go into these profiles and go browse. It seems like there's a whole bunch of different profiles that don't usually show up in other cameras. Usually it's like Adobe landscape, Adobe standard, Adobe portrait type of thing. And just take a browse through these just to double check if any of these profiles help correct any white balance errors because that's going to make for an easier editing process. So what I'm looking for here is any little bit of details. I'm noticing a lot of green in this reflection here. Obviously the water is blue so it's going to look a little bit more but I sort of like this artistic number three and I think this just brings it back closer to a little bit more neutral colors. So I'm going to apply that and I think that looks just a little bit better to start off. As you can see from my histogram, it's looking a little bit dark, so I'm going to increase the exposure. This was shot a little bit underexposed just to preserve as much highlight detail as possible, which I think is another tip when shooting with mobile phones. Brighten this up just to get those whites and the brightest point exactly where I want it. And then I love doing all my contrast in the tone curve, so I'm going to add a nice S curve. pull these blacks down and then the mid-tones down as well. So as you can see our greens are looking a little a little skewed especially in these trees here. I think that's part of the white balance. Um, so we're gonna play with the green slider because I think that's super important. Greens are so particular it's literally my least favorite color to edit. So I'm gonna bring these a little bit more to the blue and I think that makes for a more natural tree color. It does change the water here a little bit but we're gonna do a separate mask on that just to change that look. And that looks pretty good. As you can see, I like to edit with a white background. If you right click here, you can change the color. What I like about a white one is then you can really tell with the white balance if anything's looking a little bit more blue or green or too warm or anything like that. So I'm gonna increase the warmth just a little bit. I think my clouds were looking a little too blue. Check before and after. So I think the top half of this image is looking pretty good. What I want to fix is the bottom half here by doing a gradient mask coming up from the bottom. 
and as you can see it's looking a little green. So I'm going to balance that out with more pink, brighten this up, and then cooling it down and bringing it back towards the blues to get this super nice blue reflection. I think that looks pretty good. I want to add a little bit more contrast and bring this down a little bit. I think it's a little bit too blue and then adding, adding some more contrast and pumping the whites just to really get that sense of reflection. I think it looks pretty good. I think that's a decent quick and dirty edit. You can go in and do a little bit of masking, but hopefully that provides a little bit of insight on editing with a landscape photo like this. These RAWs from the Huawei P40 are pretty easy to work with overall. I'm very impressed. The quality is insane for a phone. So overall, super happy with the camera and these images have been turning out beautiful. Let's go over to this next image, which is a moody photo from Lake Louise. As you can see, again, it has a bit of that green cast to it. So I'm gonna go over to the profiles and just browse and see, see if there's anything that just gives me a better starting point. So we used artistic number three before. We're gonna try four to start off. Obviously this is a super moody day, so it's gonna be nice and cloudy. And we're gonna go for a little bit more of that colder vibe for this photo. I'm just gonna straighten this because it's bothering me a little bit. And so the first thing I'm noticing on this one is it feels a little over sharpened. I know it's one thing that mobile phones do quite often is they apply too much digital sharpening. So I'm gonna go and just drop the clarity just so it doesn't look super over sharpened. And that just gives a little bit more natural photo that looks like it was taken on your actual camera. So again, this is a little bit darker photo. So I wanna brighten this up so we get a little bit more detail in the shadows. And I'm gonna drop the highlights just because we want this to be a little bit more moody. I'm gonna crop for Instagram right away just so I can see, see how it's looking. It's a little bit better of a composition. So it is a little bit too blue as you can see in the clouds are looking a little too cool. So I'm gonna warm it up just a little bit not too much because we still want it to be a cool moody photo. And we're gonna drop the saturation. If you've never been to Lake Louise, the color of the water is really blue. It's pretty incredible. And we're gonna drop this in the tone curve, apply a nice S curve. Because it's a little bit more moody, I wanna add a little bit of a faded black look. So I'm gonna raise blacks up here. play around like that. I think that's looking pretty cool so far. I love blues. I love playing with the blues. Um, that's something that if you see on my Instagram, it's super popular. So again, we're going to go play with the blues, a bit more teal. This is looking sweet. Dropping the saturation on the blues. Again, we're going for a nice moody look and I really want to drop the saturation on these warm tones especially on these rocks in the front and that creates this overall more moody vibe see the floor. it's pretty crazy I think the profile correction makes a huge difference so I think that gave us a much better starting point to get this image a little bit more where we want so one thing I want to do is add a radial adjustment I always do this too is Invert this, I like to increase the brightness, increase the feather so it's a nice natural fall off, and then drop the clarity. And this helps guide your viewer's eye around the photo because we have a little bit of a soft, brighter spot. Brighten it up, warm it up just a touch. And we're sort of recreating the light and where the light was coming from. So by doing this, it helps guide the viewer's eye from the right side of the photo, top right, into the photo and then around with the rocks. So I'm gonna drop the dehaze. I'm not just gonna fade out that radial blur. And then drop the texture. And that just helps fade out this edge of the mountain and just increase the moodiness just a little bit. As you guys can see, there's a little bit too much faded darkness on this left side of the tree. So I'm gonna add a brush. I want to brighten up the black point in here. So I'm going to lift the shadows. 
you can see what I'm working with. Not too much area, and I just want to lift the shadows and the exposure. And I'm going to bring these a little bit more towards the warmth, because these trees in the middle are a little bit warmer. So I just want to balance out those images and up the blacks just a little bit. So that was before. And that was the after. It's getting pretty good. The last thing I want to do, again, to just control the viewer's eye, is do a gradient coming up from the top. So what I'm doing for this one is dropping the exposure and cooling it down a little bit, and then I'm going to desaturate. A little too dark. And I'm going to get rid of this coolness just because I think it's, I think it's okay already. As you can see, this is just guiding the viewer's eye up and into the frame. I think. I think that looks pretty cool. It's going to be a little bit too blue, I think. So we're going to warm this up. 6300, which I think is a normal white balance for cloudy photos. So we're going to roll with that. I think that looks awesome before and the after. Pretty incredible. Again, this photo is from the Huawei P40, which is the best smartphone that I've ever shot with. I think it's pretty incredible, the resolution and the detail. If you guys want to see the detail on this photo, like you can see, look how small we are zoomed in, and, and that detail is pretty incredible. So we can zoom back out and go to the last photo. What I thought was pretty incredible about this photo is how good the image looked straight out of camera. Um, I was very impressed overall that when it came to editing, I really didn't want to change that much of it. I thought. The green tones look good, there was nice soft light, but how the Huawei P40 was able to render the image was pretty impressive. I'm gonna crop this in a little bit. We'll go to the Insta Crop. So that's gonna be our crop that we're gonna work with. Again, I'm gonna check the profiles just to see if there's anything. Number three is pretty good, but it looks a little too pink. So we're gonna not use a profile for this one. I think the starting point was pretty good. I want to Lift the shadows, get that detail. I wanna warm this photo up. And what I like to do, sometimes when I like to warm photos, then I go into the shadows, and then my magic number for the hue is 210 for the shadows, and then just play around with the saturation. What this is gonna do is gonna balance out the warmth of the photo with a little bit of coolness in the shadows. This is obviously a common cinematic look, but it's something I like to do in my photos as well of warm tones and then cool shadows um, just to get that sort of teal, a light teal and orange look. Um, so we'll start with that and let's go play around with these greens because greens are always iffy. I think the shadows are already too blue, so we're gonna bring these greens a little bit back towards the yellow tones. I'm going to desaturate the greens and I'm going to darken the greens as well. I love this light coming up here so we're going to increase the saturation and really trying to capitalize on those orange tones. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to increase the saturation on the blues so we want to take advantage of the blue water. So that's just a nice light color to start off. We'll go do our contrast. We'll fade this just a little bit, not as much as the moody photo before, but a little bit of fade always looks pretty good in my opinion. So we'll go back up, increase the brightness, drop the highlights to recover that cloud detail, which looks pretty good. And drop the blacks. I love shooting reflections. It makes for some amazing compositions, especially here in Alberta because we have some most beautiful lakes. We're gonna do a similar operation to what we did on our very first photo of cooling this down, brightening it up. And it's looking a little green, so we're gonna bring it a little bit more towards the pink. And that looks much better. Get rid of that saturation. I'm gonna pump the whites just to get a little bit more contrast and detail in the reflection. It's looking pretty good. As you can see, I'm pretty happy with the natural colors that were produced from this image. It's pretty rare that you get a raw image that doesn't require much editing, but on this one, I tried a couple different styles. 
and I think I like the natural colors. This is gonna be my edit for this one. As you can see, the detail in this photo especially was incredible. It's a shot with a little bit more light. So if I zoom in here all the way into this cabin, it is pretty crazy. And what this allows you to do is if you wanna crop and recompose your photos, you have a lot of resolution to play with, which is pretty rare, especially for mobile phones. I remember the old days where phones just had these tiny images and you could barely crop without losing a lot of detail for this. We can crop in super, super hard. And, fit this. and it's still a decent image to work with. Obviously it's pretty extreme crop, but to have this much resolution is super impressive. So cycle through our three photos here. So these are all different styles. Hopefully these edits were a little bit unique and you learned a thing or two about editing with mobile photography. As I mentioned before, I'm using the Huawei P40 Pro, which is the world's best smartphone. And I've been so impressed with the resolution and the quality of the image that this phone produces. If you're interested in this phone, I'm gonna leave a link in my bio so you can check out more detail of all the other features that make this phone so great. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys next time.